First Lego League teams, my name is Scarlett Wildering and I am the Associate Puppetry Director and Puppeteer here at Life of Pi at London's Wyndham's Theatre. The kind of technology I work with is the technology in the arts and that can be anything from lighting, video projection, automated scenery. So for example in this theatre here we've got a number of lights up above my head that are all attached to a lighting rig. We've got these walls at the back and this stage which is circular is automated so there's somebody underneath this stage who presses a button and those walls can move forwards and back, they can turn, this floor can turn and there's also a bunch of video projectors up there that project onto the stage floor throughout the whole play. Um, and also technology that I work with as well goes across television and film. So um, more specifically, the technology I work with is puppets. And puppets can be in theatre, film and television. Uh, for example, in movies you can have an animatronic puppet which is more like a suit that's got buttons and levers inside. You can have um, uh, puppets for television and you can have puppets like this one. <laughs> which is one of the central characters for Life of Pi here <laughs> and this is Richard Parker and he is our Royal Bengal Tiger. So Richard Parker was designed by Nick Barnes and Finn Caldwell and created and built by Nick Barnes and his team um, of puppet makers and the way that um, many designers approach uh, making puppets is from a range of stimulus. So that could be research into animals. They would have probably watched a lot of videos of animals. Um, and also they can draw on inspiration from the story. And the narrative is what is the most important thing in, in, in the arts that I'm involved in anyway. Um, and within the story, they can they can be inspired by some of the images that come from those brainstorms, those conversations. For example, um, these little bits of foam that uh, well, it's sort of it's a material called plastisote, uh, which is a foam-like lightweight material, which sort of is this material here, which creates pretty much all of Richard Parker, apart from the structure inside. And um, they have sort of been loosely designed around an idea of floating detritus, which is uh, a theme that comes into the play all the time. And they thought of uh, images like driftwood floating in the ocean, and they thought, how can, we, how can we sort of represent that image within the design of the puppet? So that's one example of how they would brainstorm an idea and how they would come up with something like this. So um, the puppet is operated by three puppeteers, Owain, Romina and Tom are all here bringing life to Richard Parker and uh, with this puppet specifically there are a couple of trigger mechanisms that Owain is using here and uh, one of them, it's a little strap, <laughs> one of those trigger mechanisms is for his ears, you can see his ears are moving here and Owain is pulling on this trigger at the top, which has got a string-like material which goes from the trigger <laughs> all the way down to the sort of platform that the ear is propped up on. And when he pulls that string, the ears rotate around. And as they rotate, there's a bungee in here. So it's just like this one, this bungee here. It's a, a, an elastic type material which, <laughs> which goes taut when Owain pulls on the trigger. And when he releases the trigger, the bungee is released back to normal tension, and that's called a bungee return. The jaw is a similar mechanism in terms of physics, but also very different um, in terms of material. Um, the other trigger here, which is this one underneath there, has got a piano wire attached to it. And that piano wire runs all the way through the middle of the head and attaches to the jaw. So that when Owain pulls on the trigger, the jaw opens. And then again, just like this um, material here, just like the ears, the bungee becomes taut when the jaw is open. And then Owain releases the jaw and then the bungee goes back to normal. So it's exactly the same inside with the bungee returns. <laughs> All four of the paws are um, 
basically a slightly less uh, technical in terms of mechanism. Um, the pores are made out of uh, aluminium plated timber and they're held together by bungees, thicker bungees, very, very strong. And um, all it is is basically, obviously it's not like this, it's much more high tech and looks prettier than this, but all it is is two pieces of wood that are held together by a bungee. So you can see I've tied these two bits of wood here with a bungee and all I've done is tie a knot in either side which just stops the pieces of wood from coming apart. However, it holds them together enough so that there can be movement. So there's a little bit of space between two planks of wood. If I hold this bottom plank of wood, it sort of becomes a fixed point. And then this plank of wood can rotate around. It can bend this way and that way. So there's movement in there. And that's exactly how the paws are made. So if Rom uh, inside here was to pick up a paw, all she's doing is picking up the rod of the paw and the paw just sort of uh, moves of its own accord. So there's enough space in between the, the bungees for Rom to be able to put weight into the paw, lift the paw, and put it down again. One of the biggest challenges for um, puppeteers um, is uh, physical strain and injury. And um, because we, as you can see, we have to um, hold our bodies in uncomfortable positions for long periods of time sometimes. Um, we can develop something called RSI, which is repetitive strain injury. Um, and that can be very difficult for us because obviously if you're injured you can't work. Um, so that is one of the big challenges that uh, puppeteers uh, face and also puppet makers face. Um, because I think trying to build a puppet that is ergonomic, that makes sure that puppeteers can still operate and give life to the puppet as you want, but also um, not be at risk of injury, is, uh, is quite challenging. So I'm quite excited about um, VR in the arts. Um, so virtual reality is coming into the arts. I think it's, it's definitely brewing. It has arrived already, but it's definitely going to become a big thing in the arts in the future. And I think there's a lot of exciting things you can do by creating very immersive theatre. Uh, it means theatre will be incredibly accessible um, and quite exciting and very high tech which might be good, might be good to know. Um, and I think there's lots of opportunities for more tech to come into the arts with VR coming in. Good luck. I'm very excited to see what you bright young minds will come up with in your first LEGO League masterpiece season. Um, I hope you have all the fun in the world and um, best of luck. Can't wait to see them. <laughs>